Okay, everyone, I think we'll get started. Welcome everyone, my name is Christine Neal. I'm the Program and Instructional Specialist here at McHale. Today we have with us Khadija Ajabing and Tiffany Ross from CASA, who are both recipients of the Debbie Bhattacharya Professional Development Awards. So you've seen that advertised in our newsletters. Um, they both attendance, the, attended the TESOL convention, um, I believe it was last month, and they graciously agreed to share information that they learned at the conference. So I just want to make sure you all understand, just because you may be a recipient of the award, doesn't mean we're going to ask you to do a presentation, but two ladies have agreed to do so. So they're very excited to share what they've learned with us today. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to both of them, Khadija and Tiffany. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Christine. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna begin with my presentation and then Tiffany will follow afterwards. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. Can everyone see the presentation? Yes? Can a thumbs up? Great. Okay. Um, first and foremost, before I begin, I would like to thank Mikkel for providing um, my colleagues and myself uh, with the opportunity to attend the TESOL 2021 convention. Um, also, I would like to give a thank you to Shannon Wilk at CASA for also providing us with this information. So while attending the, the conference, there were many sessions that were led by progressive educators that discussed topics ranging from developing community of learning to teaching public speaking. Today, I would like to focus on the online resources and teaching techniques for pronunciation that were shared by Lynn Henrichson at Brigham Young University and Elizabeth Whitner, uh, who is the coordinator of International Teaching Assistant Training Program at the University of Virginia. As ESOL instructors, we are always trying to find the best ways to teach pronunciation. Meanwhile, our students are also trying to find the best ways to practice pronunciation outside of the classroom. So we're going to um, look into some of the resources that were provided. Just to give you an overview, First, we're going to do a minimum peers listening exercise. Then we will discuss or we will try to answer the question, what is the best online resource for teaching and learning pronunciation? Then we'll look at how we as instructors can optimize listening and speaking opportunities for our students. And finally, we're going to discuss some of the key factors to consider when choosing online materials. Okay, so I'm just gonna switch between screens so that we can get to our activity. Okay. Khadija, okay. Let's cross over. Okay. Let's see. Sorry about that. Sure. And okay. Oh. Sorry about that. Let's see if we can pull it up here. Okay, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play, a, I'm going to play an audio and then we have to, I'm going to play the audio twice and then we have to try to 
guess what we heard in that audio, what word, and put them in the correct order that we heard them in. So here it goes. I'm going to play, start by playing the audio. Till. Hell. Hell. Jim. Jam. Tell. Okay, so I'm going to play it one more time. Till. Hell. Hell. Jim. Jam. Tell. Okay, so go ahead and um, let's see. I'll call on someone. Let's see, Miss Tiffany. What do you think the first? What do you think the first word was? All right. Uh, could you push it again for me? <laughs> sure, of course. Till. Till. T i l l. Okay. Good. Let's try another one. Chin Wu. Hell. Can you tell me what word you think that is? Go ahead and unmute yourself. You unmute. H E L L. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then the next volunteer, can I have Yolanda? What word do you think? Is Hell. Hill, H-I-L-L. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Yeah. And then my next volunteer, I will call on Stacy. Jim. Jim. Good. And then my next volunteer, Tyra. Jim. Jim, G-E-M. And then my last one, I will call on Monica. Tell. L P E L L. Great. Okay. So let's see if we got this correct. Well done. Yay! We got it. Good job. <laughs> okay. So that's just a little warm up exercise. And now we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, well, actually, you know what, we'll just stay here for now since we're here. So my next question, um, my next question is, what do you think is the, the best online resource for teaching and learning pronunciation? Do you think that it was the activity that we just did? I'm going to call in two volunteers to give me some, some answers. Uh, Edwin? Say the question again, please. Proceed. Yes. So my question is, what is the best online resource for teaching? What do you think is the best online resource resource for teaching and learning pronunciation? Well, I'm thinking maybe uh, Duolingo. OK, good guess. And then I will call on another volunteer, um, Tiffany. I'm thinking either Duolingo, Rosetta Stone, something like that. Mm -hmm. Great answers. Great answers. Thank you so much for sharing. So while at the, the conference, what I did learn is that um, if some of you were not too sure, um, you know, you still have answers going back and forth in your head and you're not sure which one to pick, no worries, because there is no one best online resource for teaching and learning pronunciation. However, Mr. Henriksen um, did give us a few uh, recommended resources that we can use. So there were three resources that I decided that I would like to uh, share uh, with you all today, okay? So the first one that we're gonna look at is Youglish. Okay, so sorry, I didn't have that. 
Youglish. Okay. And Youglish is just a website that basically um, our students can use um, to learn how to pronunciate words. Um, so for instance, we're gonna, what I'm gonna type here is courage. Because I had a student that in one of my classes that wanted to learn um, how to uh, pronounce the word courage. So basically, Youglish just pulls all of uh, the YouTube videos that use that word courage, um, and the students are able to increase the speed of the video or um, decrease the speed of the video um, as well. I'm going. I'm going to show you in a second. It's going to go pretty fast once I start showing you. So let's, let me put in the word courage. And then you also have the opportunity to um, decide which accent you would like to use, the US accent, UK, or the Australian accent. So right here, I have the US accent um, checked. Okay, so I'm gonna type in courage. And then you just click on say it. So as you can see here, there's one out of 13,958 YouTube videos that use the word courage. So as the video is playing, I'm going to increase the speed and I'm going to decrease it just so you can see how, um, how this resource works. Have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. You're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. Most people give up on themselves easily. You know the human spirit is powerful? There's nothing that's powerful. It's hard to kill the human spirit. Anybody can feel good when they have their health, their bills are paid, they have happy relationships. Anybody can be powerful. And wish you had the courage to do what you wanted to do. You tap into that resilience and that courage that exists within you. So as you can see, the videos also have the subtitles. So again, with this resource, um, it's great because it helps, again, the students um, with pronunciation, in, in um, how it's uh, spoken um, in, in real time. And again, the students can increase or decrease the speed. So this is a very popular resource. Um, and the name of this resource is Youglish. Okay, and I will provide, um, I will provide the links to all of these resources um, before we leave today. Okay, great. So the next resource that we're going to take a look at, this resource is called the English Accent Coach. So with the English Accent Coach, this is an online tool um, for developing English um, pronunciation um, skills, as, and this website focuses on vowels and consonants. So for the purposes of this demo, um, we're going to play a game called Play Vowels. So I have it set up here. And so I did word count, I just did 20. And then as you can see, there's different levels. You can do level one, you can do level two. Um, for the purposes, again, of this demo, we'll do level one. And then you can choose the sounds that you want. You can, ju you can do all of the sounds or you can do uh, particular so sounds. So, so far using this in my class, what um, I've done is I've done, I'll start off with two sounds and then I'll increase it slowly when I see that my student has, my students have grasped um, the two, the first two sounds, then I'll increase it by one. Okay, so we're going to start off with two, I and E. And then you can also um, you can also set it to the maximum amount of guess, guesses. You can do one, you can do two, or you can do three. Three is the highest. So I'll do two. 
and then you just click here and you say begin session and then click here click to proceed he so he let's see um let me see ally do you think that was a e or i an e he get one more chance e or i i then <laughs> good hey hey good thank you ally and then so for the next one i'll click i'll Let's see, choose Shannon. Shannon, do you think that's an E or I? Hey. Say E. Great. Hey. Great, thank you. So again, um, again, it's just gonna keep repeating the same words because we only have two vowels that we're using, but you can always, uh, you can always go back and Sorry, but you can always go back and you can uh, you can add in uh, you can add in vowels. So again, we had I and E. Okay, then you can do O as well. Okay, to make it a little bit challenge more challenging. So the next resource that we will look at um, is uh, the name of this resource is called the Sound of Speech. And uh, this resource is from the University of Iowa and other organizations. And basically, um, this is a resource that helps students uh, learn how sounds of speech are produced. Um, it includes animation, uh, video animation, um, as well as uh, pictures um, as well for, for students. Um, currently, this, this um, this resource is only a for English um, because they do have it in other languages as well. This resource is only available through um, the app on your phone um, or iPad. Um, there's no resource um, actually on online for it right now at this point in time. Um, so your students could go to the app store and, and um, download um, their app store on their phones and download this resource. So we're gonna play, I'm gonna, um, because again, this is only available um, through an app, I'm gonna play a video um, that shows how this resource works. This is a demonstration of the Sounds of Speech mobile app for English. The Sounds of Speech provides audio and video instruction for learning how to articulate English speech sounds. This demonstration is shown on an Android phone. While the app may look a bit different on iPhones, the functionality and features are identical. First, select the language you wish to view instructional text in. The default is English, with options for Korean, Spanish, simplified Chinese, and traditional Chinese. Clicking on list at the top of the screen takes you to the English Speech Sounds app content. All presents a complete list of English consonant and vowel speech sounds to explore. Consonants provides more detailed explanations of how English consonant sounds are categorized by manner of production, by place of production, and by voicing. The vowels tab separates English vowel sounds into monothongs and diphthongs and further divides monothongs into positioning of the tongue in the mouth during production of that vowel. Instruction for a specific sound is accessed by selecting that sound. Once selected, three forms of instructional content may now be viewed. Clicking on the animation video shows where structures in the mouth move to produce that sound. Pa. Pa. Clicking on annotations allows you to walk through important and more detailed information on how the sound is produced.
clicking on video allows you to see what producing the sound looks like. Returning to the All tab also allows you to play audio examples of the sound in words. Pot. Happy. Top. The same procedures may be followed to see how each vowel is produced. E. The search tab may be used to enter an English word to find out what sequence of speech sounds make up that word. You can then explore each of these sounds. Ta. Ah. Puh. If you wish to view instructional text in a different language, simply return to the home screen and select that language. All instructional text now appears in that language. The Sounds of Speech app will hopefully be a useful tool to help you learn how each sound of English is produced. You're on mute, Khadija. Thank you. <laughs> I said, now that happens, um, now that we are done looking at the resources, now I'm going to jump back to the presentation. Okay. Here we go. Okay, let me go through. Okay. So. Now that, again, now that we looked at the different resources, the next question to ask ourselves um, would be, how can, as instructors, can we optimize the listening and speaking opportunities for our students? Well, Elizabeth Whitner told us that basically just provi providing these resources to our students is just not enough. So therefore, as instructors, we need to take um, a, we need to take a few more steps. And the first the, the first step would be that it is important to introduce these resources uh, to our class. Use class time to introduce uh, these resources. Next, it's important to ensure that our students are actively engaging. For example, providing, again, providing class time um, for the students to do examples. And then finally, it's important that we dedicate a class time uh, for feedback um, for our students um, in order for us to see what successes they have as well as look at their challenges. And also this is a great opportunity for us to find um, solutions as well as a team. Okay, and then finally, we're going to discuss um, when choosing online resources. So both Mr. Henriksen and Ms. Whitner, um, they both said that it is very important because there's so many, again, there's so many resources out there and there's not one best resource. However, it is very important that we are selective about choosing our resources.
And also, it's important to consider the amount of practice and feedback um, for, the, for the resource. And then finally, it's important that we also look at how students will actively engage. And that's the end of my presentation. I would like to thank you all again so much um, for attending and, and listening to my presentation today. I hope these, um, these resources are very helpful to you and your students. Um, you can see my contact if you have any additional questions. My contact information is here. And also I have, I have about, Ms. Tiffany, how, many, how much time do I have for Q&A? Three minutes. I have three minutes for a Q and A before I pass it off to my colleague. Um, if you are, if you would like to also put your questions in the chat, please feel free to put your questions in the chat, and Miss Tiffany will read them to me. Um, or go ahead and unmute yourself, and you can ask away. Khadija, for your first presentation, the warm up activity, you used a, you went to a website. Was it called Learn Tip? Learn Hip. Yes. Okay. Yes, Learn Hip. I will, and I will put those, I will put the links to all of the resources in the chat. Okay. I would do, I will do that. Learn Hip. Yes. And also, let me show you too. Um, with LearnHip, you can, LearnHip also allows you uh, to, you can, you can use the American or the U.S. accent, or you can, uh, you can change it to the, the British accent. Um, and it, it, I didn't, I didn't think it would be much different, but it does make a difference because I did the British accent with my students and they're like, what teacher, I don't understand. And then when I change it to the US accent, it's like, aha, uh -huh. like I got it, I understand now. <laughs> so it, it does make a difference. <laughs> okay, Let's see. So can, can, Tiffany, can you see the learn hip? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so here you can choose the voice you can do GB or you can do US. Okay. Do we have any other questions? There are no questions in the chat. Just thank you and awesome presentation. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm going to pass the baton to my colleague. Thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen with you. Hello, everyone. My name is Tiffany Ross. I too am a teacher for CASA and received Mikhail's Professional Development Scholarship and was able to attend the TESOL conference, which was an awesome experience. I attended many workshops over the three days and by far my favorite workshops provided practical activities and tools that I could directly use in the classroom. And so I will be sharing some of the goodies I learned with you today. One moment as I share my screen, please. And I load. <laughs> there you go. So thank you again to Mikhail for this opportunity to attend TESOL. It was truly a great experience. And I recommend that if anyone has the opportunity to attend in the future, do it. Uh, there's so much knowledge that we can be applying and using to enrich our classrooms. Today's presentation is about student engagement in the classroom. This was my favorite workshop at the conference. And being that it's all about participation and engagement, I hope to make this an interactive opportunity for you as well. So please, I invite you to participate by writing your comments, your questions in the chat. If you have questions, we will have 10 minutes at the end for some Q&A. And please, I asked Ms. Khadija if you can just give me a little warning 
when we're getting close to that time. Thank you, much appreciated. So I'd like to start off with a question for you. By a show of hands to all of our educators, have you ever asked a question in your classroom or uh, sent your students off to do an activity and this is the response that you see on your screen? Raise your hand if you've had this experience before. I see some nods, <laughs> I see some hands. Same, same. So this workshop was all about uh, student engagement and how can we develop um, activities and uh, systems that avoid this as much as possible. The, acti uh, the presentation that I'll be referring to, to today was called Connect, Manage and Engage Best Practices for the Online Classroom. This was presented by Ms. Shia Suan Chong and Sean Birmingham, and they're from Cengage, um, the National Geographic's education company. So for those of you who raised your hand and nodded your heads, we are in good company. A National Geographic education team sent out an interview across 120 different countries. They surveyed over 7,000 teachers and asked them, what is the number one challenge you're having in your online classroom? And by and far, the number one challenge teachers were having were keeping their students engaged and motivating students in the online classroom. Yes. <laughs> so today's workshop is all about how do we engage our students? And so thinking about these responses we may receive from our students, let's do a quick brainstorming session. The first takeaway that I got from this workshop was not to make assumptions about the lack of engagement. When we see responses like this, it's easy to one, take it personally as a educator. What am I doing wrong? Am I a boring teacher? Or to make assumptions about the students and why they're interacting in this way. So the big takeaway that I received first was don't make assumptions about this lack of engagement. So let's brainstorm. I invite you to type in the chat or um, you can raise your hand and I'll take a couple um, raise hands. What could student silence mean or the lack of student engagement mean in the online classroom? What are these possibilities? I see some chats rolling in. Let me see what we have here. Shy, right. Uh, the student is tired, absolutely. They're not just students, oftentimes parents, uh, they're working all day, technical difficulties, students are still processing the instructions, they're introverts, students need time to wait. Beautiful, you can keep them rolling. Um, but these are all great things to consider. It's so easy to go straight into the assumptions without considering all the possibilities. And at the workshop, they shared um, other reasons, just as you have shared today. The students may be distracted. We're existing not only in a classroom, a virtual classroom, we're also in, at home or in our cars or at work still. Student confusion, not understanding what's happening. The student silence may be that the student agrees with everything that has been said and they don't have anything to contribute or they may strongly disagree and they don't want to cause tension in the classroom. As someone mentioned, student, students need time to process, to think, everyone processes at different speeds. The student may not feel confident to answer or the material that's being shared may not feel particularly relevant to students. So these are all things to consider as possibilities before we go down the assumption uh, rabbit hole when it comes to student um, engagement or the lack of engagement in our classroom. The second big takeaway take that I took from this workshop was it's so important to build in supports for student understanding. So students may be disengaged because they don't have the tools that they need to fully engage in the first place or the knowledge. 
So there are three different ways they shared that we could support our students with their understanding. Number one is to set ground rules. You're establishing a culture and expectation around how we interact in this virtual space and what are our expectations of, of each other and of our students. So I have been applying a lot of what I learned in this workshop right away. So here's an example from this semester with my students. I, had, I asked my students what they needed in the classroom to create a positive and safe community for everybody. And I sent them into breakout rooms and small groups and they brainstormed and shared this information with each other. Then we came back together and created our classroom rules based on that brainstorm they had in their small groups. I threw in my two most important rules, which were first and second rules, but everything else was created by the students in my class. So now we have this shared document, the shared understanding, and a source for accountability for how we engage in class with one another. Another recommendation around building student support is to pre-teach useful language and features. Um, so I sound like a complete CASA fan, that's because I am. A lot of these great techniques CASA is already doing and has encouraged our teachers to do. So one thing we use at CASA is the tips for English class. The students have to know the features of whatever platform we're using to fully engage. If they don't know how to use it, they're going to be disconnected and disengaged. So pre-teaching how to use the functions of whatever platform you're using for your class is so important and it's a tool for our students. Also teaching useful language uh, so that if the students don't understand, they feel themselves feeling disengaged, they are empowered and equipped with the language they need to help re-engage themselves, to advocate for their own engagement and learning. So pre-teaching language, like what does something mean? I don't understand. Could you repeat that? Is a, a useful tool for keeping our students engaged in the class. The final support that they encourage us to do was to think about our monitoring. How are we monitoring? After we give a direction, we send our students out to do an activity. How are we monitoring um, that they're understanding the material or that they're on task in the classroom. So this led me to really reflect on and ask myself, how am I monitoring my students in the classroom? They also spoke to this idea of an illusion of transparency. This says, I know and understand, so you know and understand also. This could be um, an assumption the teacher makes, they give directions for an activity, ask, do you have any questions? Nobody has any questions, great. I understand, you understand, go. Uh, but we know that often that's not the case. There are some questions, but students may be resistant to answer or they're still processing. So monitoring is so important. So I reflected on this question, how am I monitoring my students in the classroom? And I would love for you to also share, how do you monitor your students in the classroom? After you've assigned an assignment or an activity, what do you do to check for your students' understanding? So we're gonna use a hashtag. You can type in the, in the chat, use hashtag monitoring and write um, maybe some of your best practices for monitoring your students. We uh, may not have time to go through them, but your colleagues will have the opportunity to see your great ideas. Some of the ones that I've been using in my classroom are with breakout rooms. I turn off my camera, I put myself on mute, and I, uh, after about three minutes of assigning students to their breakout rooms, I kind of sneak in and observe and see that the students are on task or understand. I also like to utilize Google Docs for writing activities. I create a Google Doc page for all of my students and they, um, they can type directly on the document in class and I can view their writing in real time because we can't walk around and, and see what they're writing like we used to. 
And then the third technique I heard actually at the conference, we tend as educators after we've given an instruction to the students and are preparing them to go on their way, we ask, do you have any questions? And a lot of times that question is met with silence. So the simple tweak of instead of asking, do you have any questions, asking what questions do you have is already assuming that they do have questions and creating an uh, uh, open environment for them to then share them. Third takeaway is to lead with engagement, creating opportunities for the students to fully engage in the classroom environment. They suggested that you engage your students in highly interactive activities within the first three minutes of class. So that sets the tone for the classroom and it sets the um, expectation for how we want our students to be involved. So I'll be sharing for the rest of this presentation um, some of the fun, engaging activities that they shared and hopes that you too can apply some of these in your classroom. And if I could just get a time check for Ms. Khadija. Yes, you have about 15 more minutes. Okay, total. <laughs> okay, I got it. Thank you. I appreciate it. The first activity is called See, Think, Wonder. Has anyone done by show of hands or heard of See, Think, Wonder? I see one hand, one hand. So this is new for many of us. Um, this, will, this was new for me as well. And I tried it in the classroom. So this is a photo-based activity. You start by showing a snippet of a picture to your students. And it can be a picture of anything or a picture of something that's relevant to what you're talking about in your unit. And asking the students, what do you see? And these are the student responses that I would type into um, uh, using annotations to type up as they shared. But I do wanna draw your attention particularly to the picture of the students on the right side. Right? Everyone has their camera on, they're engaged, they have their thinking faces. We did this within the first few moments of class and it really does reflect the, the level of engagement this activity promotes. So after you ask your students, what do you see? You ask, this is the actual full picture. <laughs> what do you think is happening? And the students brainstorm. This is a great opportunity to use new vocabulary it's for them to reflect on how they're forming sentences. And then follow with, I wonder. So students make uh, statements based on, on the photo. I wonder what the person's doing. Where is he? Is he taking a selfie? This was a really fun activity. It was great for vocabulary and um, really engaging for the students. They really encourage in this, re this workshop the use of images and real life images to engage as a tool for engagement for students. So with one picture, there are many different activities you can do, including the see, think, wonder activity. So you could do thought bubbles where students come up with the comments that the people in the picture might be saying. You could ask them to reflect on questions around the relationship of the people in the picture. What's the relationship between this man and woman? Um, what's the relationship between the robot and the woman? Right, some questions for them to reflect on. They could prepare three interview questions for one of the people in the picture or all of the people in the picture. They can make predictions about what they think is going to happen next. Or you could do a caption writing competition where they could compete to write the funniest caption or they could work on describing what they see by writing a caption for the picture. So it's one picture six different activities that you could do to engage your students with one picture. Brainstorming is another great way to engage students in the classroom and promote uh, student 
uh, conversation and participation. Just as we did at the beginning of the presentation, we are brainstorming different ways that students may, uh, what different reasons for student silence. I recently did this with a different group of English students. We, brain, we were talking about the body. So as a whole group, we brainstormed 10 different body parts in English um, just to see where they were and also to just generate conversation and excitement around the topic. Okay, I'm going to show maybe one more for time's sake, but I will then share this presentation with Ms. Christine um, so that you can see some of the other activities present. But this one, it, they talked about ranking and ordering um, activities where you are encouraging the students to put different items in order from one to 10 or to think of the top seven answers for something. So this made me think of Family Feud. Right? Um, so let's try a little bit ourselves. In my class, we have recently been talking about time culture in the United States and being late, what that means and how to communicate when you are late. So this is one that I would use with my students in class and I'll use with you now. All right, so if you have an answer, I invite you to unmute or raise your hand and yell it out. Name, and you can make this fun, name the top seven reasons why someone might be late for work. Anyone have a, a guess? An ill family member. An ill family member. We would celebrate that answer, but um, we can count that as number six, number six on the board. Well, Oversleeping. Okay, good. Oversleeping. Let me see if it's on our list. Yes, number two. Wake up late, left late. I saw traffic in the chat. Oh, thank you. That's our number one answer. Traffic. <laughs> we'll go with one more. Yes. Forgot where the office is. Forgot where the office is. I love that answer. Unfortunately, it's not on the list, but we'll celebrate your answer. Fantastic. So this could be a fun activity that we have. I can show you the complete list because I know some people may be bothered that they don't know the final answers. So I'm going to go to the view and present for you. Okay, so the other answer is number three car trouble, accident, and number five, dropping off kids, and answer number seven, weather. Okay, so this is another example of an activity that you could do with your students to promote engagement, to review materials you've over already covered, or to um, lead into materials that you plan to cover that day. I have some additional activities, but I can share that with you on the link because we are now, and I mean, sing, uh, send you the presentation later because we're now in our Q and A section. Um, so I just wanted to thank you, uh, Mikhail, for this awesome opportunity to um, become more effective as an educator and to share um, what I've learned with my students and with. Um, all of you that are here today. So thank you for your time and your attention and uh, what questions or comments do you have? And I'll have uh, Ms. Khadija if there's anything in the chat. Yes. Tiffany, can you show us the Kins game? <laughs> okay, yeah, I can. Okay, going back to Kim's game. Okay, Kim's game is um, a recall activity. Okay, so in Kim's game, you can pick an image from online, you can find an existing image or create one of your own that's relevant to your students. You give your students a designated time, amount of time to look at all the objects that are present. Okay, so for all of you, I'll give you 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 
three, two, one. Then you ask them questions. How much did the Uno game cost? Does anybody know? 10 cents. Uh, let's, let's look. Anyone agree? Same answer. Okay, I see some thumbs up and some head nods. 50 cents. Ooh, 50 cents. Here we go. 10 cents, 10 cents. Congratulations, Edwin, <laughs> and everyone who agreed with him. Um, so you could use this if you're, for example, if you're doing a unit on healthy foods, right? You could find an image online of a variety of foods um, and maybe have your students recall what healthy foods did you see? Right. You could um, come up with any questions. You could use it as a complete um, recall activity where list as many items as you can remember from the picture. So that's Kim's game. Any other questions, comments? I see the chat's rolling. Oh, congratulations, Edwin. <laughs> Well, thank you again for your time and um, attention. My name is Tiffany Ross, so you can email me. This is my teacher email that I have all my students email me at tiffanyross.teacher at gmail.com. So if you have any questions, comments, or just wanna chat, um, engagement, it's my favorite, one of my favorite teacher topics to talk about. So thank you again. Thank you very much, Tiffany and Khadija. Your presentation was very helpful. We learned a lot of great information. Everyone, I mentioned I put in the chat a link to a survey. So please, if you'd complete that before you leave, I will be forwarding a copy of this presentation. We're recording it. Also the slides that I received from them and the links. So you'll be getting all that information for you to use and share with others. So thanks again, Tiffany and Khadija. Thank you. Right. Don't forget to complete the survey, please. The link is in the chat. Also, Christine, can I add also for everyone um, in regards to my presentation, I want to let everyone know that when you get the PowerPoint, if you click on the resources, the links are embedded into the pictures. So all you have to do is click on the picture and it'll take you to the resource. Great, thank you. All right, so once you click on the link, you'll open up the survey in a different browser. So I'm going to end the meeting. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. <laughs>